You might think the only way out of a boring job is to quit and go work somewhere else. But before you do that, there's a couple methods you can try that'll help you love your job again. Hey Leader, David Burkus here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And a big part of doing your best work ever is actually working in a job you enjoy, right? which unfortunately is not the majority of people. Right? Research from the Gallup organization shows that only about 20% of people here in the United States where I am, it's about 30%, but only 20% of people worldwide would say they actively engaged and really love their job. The other 80% presumably just show up every day because it's expected of them and every day they just wanna tell their coworkers, we have to stop meeting like this. Maybe we can go for a drink or whatever, but we gotta get out of this boring job. And that's a problem for a couple reasons. I mean, one, life's too short to work in a job that sucks, but the other is that it can be affecting your performance. Systematic evidence, meta-analyses of the relationship between employee satisfaction and a host of other stuff shows that people who love their job are more productive, are less stressed, are more loyal, are more ethical, and a host of other positive behaviors that affect performance come from that feeling of loving your job. But I get it, sometimes you just get bored, sometimes you get frustrated. Before you quit and go try and find another job, there's a couple things you can do to try and love your job again. Now most of these tips come from the brilliant researchers Amy Resneski and Jane Dutton who crafted this concept of job crafting, making subtle changes to your job over time that help you do more of what you love and less of what's causing you to hate your job in the first place. The first way you can love your job again is to connect with customers more often. Are there certain tasks you can do or ways that you can interact with the direct beneficiaries of your work? Now, often this is customers, right? In the business, even in the, the public sector, that these are the customers who are served by that organization. Is there a way you can get to interact with them more often? Beyond just leveraging what's known as pro-social motivation, the motivation to hire others, this also helps with what's known as task significance, knowing that the role that you're doing matters because it plays a part in the lives of these people. Now, it may not be that your actual customers are external to the organization. They may not actually be the actual customers. There's a lot of jobs and actually a lot of the most demotivating jobs that serve internal customers, other people in the organization. Your role is as a support staff to somebody else who gets to interact with the customers. In that case, you could honestly do both. You could try and connect with the people external to the organization who are served by the work the organization does, but you also probably wanna connect just a bit more often with the people who take the work from you, the people you hand it off to, your internal customers, connect with them, understand how your work helps, and just by being there, you're giving them the opportunity to demonstrate how much they appreciate the work that you're doing, and that will increase your task significance and help you love your job again. The second way to love your job again is to claim more control. Take on more autonomy, and we'll talk about why that matters in a second. There's two ways to claim more control over your job. The first is to have conversations with your direct supervisor about the ways in which you want a bit more say over how you do the work or where you do the work or when you do the work. You want a bit more autonomy. You want a bit more ability to make the decision for yourself. Now, you can only do this if you've demonstrated decent performance in the past, right? If you're already slacking off because you hate your job and your direct supervisor thinks you're lazy, more control is not gonna be a solution that he or she approves of. But if you're a high performer, if you're putting in the work and you're actually just a little bored by that performance, increasing that autonomy, asking for more control can help. Now the other way that you can claim more control is to add tasks to your job. Volunteer for things that aren't actually expected of you. When you volunteer for stuff, you're much more likely to be given a say in how you do it, right? It's seen as volunteer, even if it's you know actually kind of part of your salary, you're doing it during work hours that people are paying for, it's still seen as something you volunteered for and so most people are more comfortable giving you a bit more autonomy. And we know from a wealth of research going all the way back to Edward DC and Richard Ryan that autonomy is one of the main drivers of intrinsic motivation. The, the feeling that you have a say in how you do the work, when you do the work, who you do the work with, and even where you do the work like at the office, at home, at a coffee shop, the library, wherever. All of those feelings of autonomy increase one's feeling of intrinsic motivation, and intrinsic motivation is one of the big determinants over whether or not you actually love your job. The third way to love your job, again, is to reframe your role. 
And this kind of ties into the first one, right? One of the reasons we want to connect with customers, internal or external customers, is that we want to kind of reframe our role and understand the greater purpose behind it. We want to understand how our role fits into the larger puzzle pieces of how this organization operates. We don't want to feel like a cog in a machine, but we do want to feel like, I don't know, a necessary cog in the machine. We do want to feel like our role matters. And often lack of proper framing from your supervisor or from the job description, et cetera, makes you feel like your job is redundant or totally unnecessary or, or that it would be better outsourced to some other firm or to a bot somewhere. But if you can reframe your role, you can increase that sense of task significance. One of the fastest and easiest ways to do this is the sort of it's a wonderful life trick. Uh, if you remember the movie It's a Wonderful Life, essentially there's a man who feels like his life is purposeless and meaningless and boring and decides to take his own life. But before that, he gets intervened by an angel who shows them what the world would look like without his role. And that is the It's a Wonderful Life test. Take a second to think about if you just stopped doing your work, how would that affect the rest of the organization? No doubt it would affect them negatively and that will help you realize how important your role actually is. Now, please don't actually stop doing your work because then you won't have a job to try and even love again. But just take a, a mental exercise, a thought experiment, an it's a wonderful life test to figure out, okay, if I left, what would happen? If this role disappeared, what would happen to the rest of the organization? And if you can do that, odds are you'll find some answers that'll help you reframe your role and increase your sense of task significance, your own sense of significance, and the way that you love your job. The fourth and final way to love your job again is to block bad bosses. Yes, the research here supports the old maxim, people don't quit bad jobs, they don't quit bad companies, they quit bad bosses. Often having a terrible supervisor is one of the reasons people really start to hate their job. And this can really be a tragedy. There's a lot of situations where people like the work that they do, but hate who they do it for. And you may not be able to make the jump to be able to do the same work at a different company for a better boss. And by the way, even if you're interviewing for someone who looks like a better boss, they may not be. So jumping ship may not be the right idea. But are there ways you can block your boss? Not block them out entirely, that's gonna get you fired, but block your interactions, reduce your interactions with him and her. Try and make it a bit more scripted, a bit more transactional. Try and limit the amount of time you're even in meetings with this person or turn what used to be an in-person check-in to a series of emails. There's a number of different things you can do to limit your exposure to that person and in doing so, limit the toxicity that they spray on you. It's infecting you and making you hate your job as well. You can't eliminate bad bosses entirely, but you can put in limits. Maybe these are time limits, right? Maybe your boss has a real bad problem respecting evenings and weekends. While doing your regular work, you can make it quite clear by actually intervening and saying, hey, you know what? I don't respond to emails on evenings and weekends, or maybe just be bad at emails and, and let them ask why you haven't responded to that email. And then you can be the one that says, uh, cause you sent it at 1130 at night, right? Little things like that that make them realize you want some boundaries will help you block or at least limit the exposure you have to that bad boss. Doing so will get you time to focus on the things about the job that you love again. Now, as I said at the top, these four methods, connecting with customers, claiming more control, reframing your role, and blocking bad bosses beyond just amazing alliteration, these four methods are largely inspired by the work of Amy Rosneski and Jane Dutton. And if you're questioning them, one thing I want to point out is that this research was done on some of the most purposeless or seemingly meaningless jobs. And what they found was that people frame their jobs differently. Some people look at their job as a job, some people look at it as a career, meaning something they can grow into and make progress in, and some people look at it as a calling, as something they were meant to do, as something they truly love. And what separates the callings from the careers and the just a job people is that they've taken the time to claim more control, taken the time to reframe their role or connect with customers so they see its significance. And they've taken the time to make sure that they're led by leaders who tell them their work matters. So before you quit and try and find a better job somewhere else, think about the ways that you can craft your role into a job that you actually feel inspired to do. And in doing so, a job where you can actually produce your best work ever. Oh, and one more thing. If you're trying to love your job again, if you're trying to make it less boring, you're probably also fighting against the feeling of burnout as well. So you wanna check out this video here on what causes burnout and what you can do about it. Before you burn out, take some time to watch this video.